Why did you want to be a cosmonaut? <coughs> Actually, it's true. I, have, I haven't thought about it. Ну, в частности, когда был еще ребенком, потом взрослел, в школе были разные планы насчет моего будущего. When I was in school, I thought about different types of future, imagined different types of future for myself. My father was in the military, so when I was very little, I only wanted to be an officer. Then my plans changed. And then probably in the ninth grade, I was about 15 years old, I happened to hear from a classmate that uh, we do have an organization that prepares future cosmonauts. Uh, I was interested in what it was, I found it, I went there, I talked to one of the managers and uh, eventually I was accepted. And so I was very excited about it, I took classes uh, on cosmonautics, on the hardware and technologies that is used in space, also just a general philosophical issue such as why we're doing this and where we want to go from here. We um, used underwater equipment to dive, we used to, we would jump with a parachute, we did a lot of interesting activities and we also participated in competitions. Not sure how I can say it. This was the Korolev reading competition where children would prepare projects that they would use to compete. This was done uh, in Moscow based on the Bauman University, and that's a well-known college in Russia. And so I participated in this in such, such a competition and uh, we brought uh, several projects from our little team and uh, two of my friends and I created our own project and it was actually the the reuse vehicle, space vehicle. And um, so that was interesting for me because that was my opportunity to see this college. I walked down the halls, I looked at it, I liked it, and I decided that's where I want to go to college. I realized that it was very difficult to become a cosmonaut. You have a lot of requirements that you have to meet. You may or may not get lucky, but I decided that in any case, if I do get to become a cosmonaut, that's great. If not, then I will still want to work in the space industry. That, that's it. Tell me a little bit then about your, uh, your uh, educational and then your professional career. You, you, you brought us up to where you uh, attended the Bowen University. Tell me, tell me about your studies and how you, uh, your professional career then led you to becoming a cosmonaut. Yes, I graduated from the Bauman University in 1993 with a degree in mechanical engineering, specializing in the spacecraft, specifically building the spacecraft. And uh, a few years after that, for a few years, I worked at the RC Energia. This is the design bureau that developed and still develops satellites and spacecraft starting back in the beginning of uh, the space era. And they continue working on it presently as well. So I worked several years in the design department, uh, the, specifically in the department that uh, develops and uh, modifies the cargo vehicles. So after a few years, I decided I want to be a cosmonaut, and um, I applied. I went to take my medical commission, um, and I passed, and also my technical preparation, and so um, I became a candidate cosmonaut. Um, you mentioned a moment ago that you said your father was in the military. Does that mean that uh, you grew up living in many cities around the country? Mm, yeah. Uh, where is it that you consider to be your hometown? I was born in the North Caucasus. Stavropol region, the city of Nivinomesk, that's a small town. 
Ну, мы очень скоро туда уехали. But uh, my family left it shortly мы after my birth. Времени. We lived in many cities, but most of my life I spent in Ukraine, the city of Zaporozhye. So that is my Ukraine, I can say, is my second native country. I have many relatives and friends there as well. Also, we were supposed to live for three years in Kamchatka, the Kamchatka Peninsula, which is the easternmost part of Russia. I remember that, and uh, the nature is very beautiful there, but the, the living conditions were pretty harsh. But again, most of my life I spent in Ukraine, that's where I graduated from the high school, that's where I became interested in cosmonautics, and that's where I traveled to Moscow from to get into college. Into college, and as you've explained, uh, working for Energia and, and now as a cosmonaut, the flying in space part of your job as a cosmonaut is a part that we all know can be dangerous. So, Oleg, I'm interested, what is it that you believe that we get, what is it that we learn or achieve as a result of flying people in space that makes it worth taking that risk. Hmm. I could quote Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, who said in the beginning of the last century, that humanity will not forever stay on Earth, that we will expand beyond Earth at first and then beyond the solar system. So I think that it's just an inherent nature of a human being to expand, to research. Earth is the cradle of our civilization, but it is possible right now it's not the best time for us, but I think it's temporary and we will move forward and move beyond our planet and continue developing our civilization. So this is the future global plans. Now for the immediate future, I think it gives us new knowledge in uh, technology and medicine and science. Also new capabilities of um, learning more about our planet, about the processes that take place in the place where we live. What causes events, what we should do to preserve our planet just as um, favorable for survival as it is now. You are a member of the International Space Station's Expedition 25 and 26 crews. Could you please summarize for me the goals of your six-month flight and tell me what your main responsibilities will be during this time? Because I'm the flight engineer for both the Soyuz vehicle and the station. My first and foremost responsibility is the vehicle. To be able to spend six months on board of the ISS, you should be able to get to the ISS first. We will be testing the new modification of Soyuz, and that means additional responsibility. Also, our responsibilities on board of the ISS, just like for any other crew member, my, my responsibilities will include to performing a number of medical experiments, perform three EVAs, assembling additional equipment, so I'm sure I'll be busy. This is going to be your first uh, flight in space. Can you tell me what it was like for you when you were informed that you had been selected to make your first space flight? Naturally, I was very happy initially. <coughs> Especially, it, was, it became interesting when I learned that I will be launching on the updated vehicle, and that will be the first launch for this type of vehicle, so that creates additional responsibility and, of course, additional excitement. 
Well, let's talk a bit about the, the Soyuz vehicle. This is, as you say, an updated version of the, the Soyuz Teyama. Uh, what is it that is new about this Soyuz, and how, does, how do those changes improve its performance? The main modification is that they've installed the new onboard computer. Therefore, we have new software. And the new motion control system for the vehicle. So there are more navigational capabilities and more, con more control capabilities. The vehicle will continue supplying data throughout the entire flight. We will know where the vehicle is located, etc. So there are many things that I can tell you, but the main idea here is that the um, motion control system of the vehicle has been changed. Is the do these changes make it? easier for the uh, crew members to fly or make it more robust in its performance? I would say both. Both is correct. We have a new interface which makes it easier to perform the informational exchange with the computer. We will be receiving more complete information from the computer regarding the onboard systems. And that will make the process the process of uh, controlling the vehicle and uh, approaching the station more, more simple for the crew, I hope. Let's talk now about the space station itself. Uh, can you give us a, a sense of what the space station that you're going to arrive at is like? Uh, what sorts of modules and laboratories and, and other compartments are, are available now for this crew of six? It may be difficult right now to count how many modules the station has, because as you're well aware, the International Space Station is an international project that involved the participation of 16 countries. The station consists of two segments, the U.S. segment and the Russian segment. The U.S. segment consists of uh, JAXA modules and ESA modules as well. There are two airlocks on the station. One is located on the U.S. segment and is capable of supporting U.S. equipment. And then on the uh, Russian segment, we have an additional airlock that is capable of supporting Russian spacesuits. We also have several specialized labor laboratory modules, uh, the Columbus module, uh, the JAXA module, which is KIBO, lab on the U.S. segment, that's also a laboratory module, two small research or uh, Mini research modules on the Russian segment, the service module, which supports the Russian segment systems and uh, experiments. So there are many capabilities uh, on board of the ISS to perform scientific experiments. Specifically, we are scheduled to perform three extravehicular activities uh, from the Russian airlock using Russian spacesuits. And I want to get you to tell me about those in a second. Your description of the station as it exists today uh, is a dramatically different space station than that that the Expedition 1 crew encountered when they arrived uh, 10 years ago. And you'll be on board for the 10th anniversary of the uh, arrival of the first crew to the International Space Station. Oleg, in your thinking, what is it that is the best thing that has happened, uh, that is the best achievement of the station partnership during this first 10 years of the International Space Station program? In addition to the technical support and the scientific support activities that I will be that we have performed, we have gained a lot of experience in international cooperation because this is um, the first large-scale international 
project, and uh, that allowed us to gain a lot of experience in working together, and I'm sure we can use that experience in the future as well. Additionally, as I mentioned earlier, we are performing interesting experiments on board of the ISS, including biomedical research, astrophysics, Earth observation, experiments, etc. I can keep going. Well, I, let's talk about that, because now, with a crew of six, there's a greater opportunity for utilization of the space station than there has been up until now. Uh, many of the experiments are designed to find out how human beings can live and work in space. And for those, you and your crewmates are the uh, subjects of the experiment. Tell me about some of the, the different kinds of investigations that will be involved during your flight for which you will be uh, will be the experiment subject. <coughs> we are scheduled to perform a number of experiments related to investigating how a human organism, human body, can survive and exist in space flight, specifically weightlessness, increased radiation level. And there is a number of experiments that uh, researches the cardiovascular system and the vegetative system. We have technological experiments that investigate how a small group of people can work for an extended period of time together in an enclosed space. We are also researching and studying how weightlessness affects the coordination skills and how we can restore our capabilities once we return to Earth. Because certainly that's a very important thing. You want to be able to uh, to be able to, to function in Earth or when we reach another planet. Of course. This is the work that uh, not only researches how we work on board of the SS uh, for a long time, but also how we can survive the spaceflight to other planets as well. There are a lot of other kinds of laboratory research that, uh, for which you and your crewmates will be the operators uh, during your time on orbit. Uh, these are in other scientific disciplines. Uh, tell me about some of those. What other kinds of science research will you be involved in during the six months that you'll be spending on board the station? There are several types of experiments, for example, for materials research, growing crystals and uh, new materials with new properties, also growing protein molecules, experiments related to geophysics, researching and uh, observing the Earth theme radiation levels, the earthquakes. We are learning how we can predict earthquakes, the time and location, also atmosphere observation. Specifically, we will be developing the special methodology to um, research the gases being formed in the atmosphere of the station. We are going to study the environment, the ecology, the men created and uh, natural disasters and uh, their consequences. And uh, again, it's a long list, I can keep going. Uh, that science work, it will, as you say, there's a lot of it, will keep you busy. Um, you also mentioned a couple of minutes ago that the current plan for your mission calls for spacewalks, uh, three of them out of the Russian section of the station in the latter part of this year, and you are going to be uh, involved as a spacewalker in those. Uh, tell me about who will be involved in, in the spacewalks and what work it is that you'll be doing outside. According to the current plan, 
должны будем сделать три выхода. Два выхода будут. Two EVAs are scheduled. Федор Юрчихин. For Fyodor Yurchikin, myself, and myself, and the third one will be performed by Dmitry Kondraktiv and me. So it looks like I will be participating in all three spacewalks. So again, that means additional responsibility, but that makes it that much more exciting. On the surface of the Russian segment, specifically on outside the service module, we will need to remove some of the equipment that is working now and install new units, new hardware. Specifically, the experimental unit to the laser data exchange with the ground, geophysics hardware. Splesk experiment specifically that allows us to study the spikes in radiation that uh, are observed immediately before the earthquakes. We will also need to launch a mini satellite which uh, was developed by our students. So these are the, 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 mo the major activities that we have. It's important, I think, for us to realize that all of the science on the International Space Station is not done inside the station, that much of it is done on the outside. That is correct. Often though these are two interconnected. Some of the hardware is located inside of the station and the crew works with it. Some of the units are outside and those are controlled in a remote manner by the crew. Also, we um, expose certain materials to radiation to see how the space flight or being in, in open space changes their properties. Bio-risk experiment is uh, something that will allow us to identify the survivability of uh, microorganisms in, the, in vacuum and uh, in, with the high levels of radiation that we have in space. Have you gotten any special uh, guidance or instruction from your cosmonaut colleagues about, uh, about performing a spacewalk and what it is like to float outside as your own little spaceship? Of course, we had the joint uh, simulations and joint training with Fedor Yurchikin, and he is a crew member who is very experienced in uh, performing spacewalks in spacesuits. So there are some tips and tricks that you can use to make your work more effective, no doubt about that. The plan for your time on orbit also now calls for a couple of visits from space shuttles. Uh, the current launch schedule has Discovery arriving at the station on STS-133 uh, late in this year. Uh, tell me, uh, just in general, what is it that's uh, on the agenda for your time or the joint mission with the Discovery crew on 133? You should probably ask this question to Scott Kelly because um, he's our commander. He, he works mostly on the U.S. segment. My understanding is that he's a, an experienced crew member and it will be easy for us to work with him. Also, it will be interesting that we will have two brothers working on orbit at the same time. Yes, that uh, is supposed to happen in the uh, last space shuttle of mission of the, that flies early next year. Um, STS-134, the last scheduled flight, uh, means that you will be on board to see that uh, historical activity occur. Uh, Oleg, what are, what are your thoughts about the space shuttle's place in the history of human spaceflight and, and its role in building the International Space Station.
Безусловно, программа Space Shuttle сыграла огромную роль. Space Shuttle program, no doubt, has been very important in building the SS because practically all US modules have been delivered in orbit by the shuttle and also the new Russian module as well, MRM-1. It's a very interesting program that demonstrated the capabilities, possibly both advantages and disadvantages of a multi-use transportation system. This program has existed for almost 30 years, and it has uh, contributed greatly to the development of uh, the space uh, research. Once the space shuttle stops flying, a major source of supplies to the station will end, but there are three other proven cargo ships that are supplying the station, and each one of them is scheduled to make a visit uh, during Expedition 26. Can you tell us a little bit about the capabilities of these unpiloted Russian, European, and Japanese uh, cargo ships, and what role the crew members have in uh, their arrivals and, and then in using them once they've arrived? HTV is the vehicle that has been developed by the Japanese Space Agency, and its primary goal is to support the, U, the Japanese module. This is a new type of vehicle, the free fly, flyer vehicle, which means that it doesn't dock to the station directly, but rather it approaches the station and from the station keeping close to it, and then the operator on board of the ISS uses the robotic arm to mate it to the docking mechanism docking port. My understanding is that this will be the responsibility of one of the U.S. crew members. ATV has been developed by the European Space Agency, and this is the vehicle that will be docking to the Russian segment. And the process of approach and docking will be something that the Russian crew member will be responsible for in cooperation with the European Space Agency. I know that the ATV arrival that will um, take place so when we are on board uh, Alexander Kaleri and Pound Poly will be responsible for it. This vehicle will supply the station with both air, oxygen, dry cargo, and water to fill our water tanks. We can also use this to perform attitude control for the station if necessary. Progress. Progress is a Russian vehicle. You can call it a workhorse for the Russian space program. Its a great advantage is that it's the vehicle that can dock to any docking port of the station with any stationed attitude. And uh, in addition to the automatic mode, it can also um, be controlled manually um, by the operator inside of the station. It can also supply the station with dry cargo, air, water, oxygen, and uh, refill the station prop tanks with um, propellant. So that's a short description of all three vehicles. So with all of those, as well as the uh, possible commercial vehicles that are, are being developed, there will be a lot of different ways to continue to uh, bring supplies to the station and, and change the look of the operations there in the future. Um, Oleg, I'm interested to get your thoughts about the future of the space station beyond just your time there, um, where would you think that human space exploration is headed in the next, I don't know, 20 or 50 years or so? And, and what role do you think the International Space Station will play in getting us ready for that future? Mm. 
20-50 лет довольно большой срок. 20 или 50 лет это долгий срок. I would say that in the next 10 years the station will continue developing. We have certain plans to deliver new research modules to the station. Possibly we will be testing new types of vehicles. And currently there are plans to use the ISS as a platform to, uh, to prepare for flights to other planets in the um, near future.